Hello and welcome to everybody who's tuning in to our volunteer and management team series of interviews. I'm Dawn Campbell, your host, and today I'm joined by the lovely, talented and very dynamic Nikki Wilde. Hello, Nikki. Hello, Dawn. Thank you for inviting me to one of the interviews. I'm very excited that we get to chat. You're welcome. I always love spending time with you. I learn a lot and you have great energy. And uh, I was very heartened to hear when we were just having a little chat off camera that you've got a big celebration, 15 years wild empowerment. That's quite an achievement. I hope you're really going to celebrate that milestone. I yeah I I sort of it sort of crept up on me I don't feel old I'm enough sure. to have a business that's 15 <laughs> years old so I kind of it was a bit of a surprise when I when I yeah. looked at the calendar and thought actually yes but you're right it it is worth celebrating I think um quite often we kind of underestimate our own achievements but um, but if we don't blow our own trumpets who else is going to blow it for us exactly yes I mean it's great PR it's very inspiring for the younger generation uh, you know, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, because a lot of them fold within three to five years uh, for economic reasons. So I think this is a massive achievement and top marks to you. And that's why Nikki is our business of coaching uh, manager, because she has this wealth of experience. As you can see, she was a former finance director and she has a huge amount of corporate experience. So she was ideally placed to support our members and um, well, I think it's about third or four years now that you've been doing this, where you developed the 12 modular self-teach program. And now you bring it to life in a monthly drop-in clinic, which I know is greatly appreciated. Yeah, I love the clinics because I never know what's going to happen. Everybody's like, all of our fabulous coaches and mentors have got access to the modules to work through at their own pace and in whatever order is useful to support their businesses. And the monthly drop in is an open door for an hour where any of them can come and ask anything at all. So I never know what's going to come up. I never know what subjects we're going to talk about. I never know whether it's going to be me and one or me and several. It depends who's who who needs some some assistance. Sometimes it's just a sounding board and people just want some encouragement that they're on the right track. Sometimes there's some really specific things that we talk about. Some very we get really into the nuts and bolts of the engine of the of their businesses. Sometimes it's more strategic and they're just looking at the big picture and sort of concepts of where they want to be going with things so I love those monthly drop-ins and they are open door for anyone who's around at the time to, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the time we've scheduled them um, and yeah they're, they're, they're one of the things I look forward to in my calendar. Uh, yeah it's, I mean we're fellow coaches and fellow mentors so for us it's a great opportunity to pay it forward isn't it we you know the next generation of great coaches coming up give them a helping hand share the experiences and hopefully some shortcuts and some advice and and really just guide them in the right direction in whatever way that uh, they need and because you've had such a successful uh, run at this uh, you'll have noticed just recently Joe has come on board Joe Cantel as our orientation manager and she said I want to do drop-in clinics so uh, we had the first one last month uh, last week rather and uh yeah so she's going to be doing that on a monthly basis as well so it's another way of wrapping an arm around our members which is what you're so good at i think that's the thing mm. we, we just it's, it's one of the reasons i love being part of iapcnm i considered accreditation in various guises um as a as a um, a fellow, a SEMA fellow, Chartered Institute of Management Accountants fellow. I grew up in the world of accreditation and CPD and continuous development. So when I qualified with my coaching, first coaching diploma, the idea of accreditation was a no brainer for me because it was the world I was used to. But I investigated different organizations, different routes to accreditation. And one of the things that I loved um, from the start about IAPCNM is that we really do want to put an arm around everyone it's not just a pay a fee and you get a certificate and a badge on your website and that's it you're forgotten about until the next year when they come and ask for a renewal fee the iapcm is here day in day out for everybody whatever is needed um and it's it is what set it apart from other options when i was looking at them so to be part of that and to be able to um, it is paying it forwards because I had some fantastic advice when I was getting started and still do from my coaches and mentors. 
Um, and Peter Thompson, who some people may have come across, who, who is a well-known content creator. Peter, I was, I was sat in a seminar with Peter very, very early on in my coaching business. And he said something which has stuck with me ever since, which is learn from the person who's a step ahead of you and assist the person who's a step behind you. And I thought that was such a simple but so profound thing to do because we are all a work in progress. We can, there are all people who are ahead of us in the journey whom we can le learn from. And we are so we are all constantly learning still. And there are people behind us in the journey at various stages who we can assist, who are, who are following in our footsteps. And I just thought that was such a lovely, simple way of thinking about it. So mm. I've kind of built that into, into all of my business philosophy with my coaches and my mentees over the years. And also with the coaches and mentors who I have mentored um, over the last decade plus of mentoring coaches in training who are following in my footsteps, getting started, learning from some of my mistakes and hopefully sharing some shortcuts with them to uh, to, to help avoid some of the pitfalls as well. And that's yeah. why we put the program together, isn't it? Because we, we surveyed the members to say, what are the challenges that you're finding? They've our members, by definition, they're accredited professionals. They know what they're doing when they're with their clients. It's the behind the scenes stuff, isn't it? They're, they're running the engine, um, make sure the engine runs smoothly, making sure that you've got all the pieces of the jigsaw in place behind the scenes so that it is it is that smooth um, swan on the surface, even if the feet are going paddling like mad underneath the water. And it was those challenges that our coaches and, and mentors were sharing with us about the behind the scenes stuff. Wouldn't it be useful if I knew how to do this? Or is there a better way of doing that? Or just having somebody to talk to about the business side of having a coaching business. There's lots of support for those who've been through training, who are developing their skills as coaches or as mentors. There was considerably little available um, on the business side of things. So uh, we, we put this program together for the membership. And of course, we've got the live drop ins every month as well for them to to come and hang out and hopefully feel that they are supported and connected. Yeah. And, and because of that initiative, Nikki, uh, you know, where we plug that gap in the market between somebody, say, on Friday night, getting a distinction of their certificate from their coach training academy to Monday morning thinking, oh, what do I do? How do I create a business? Who's going to pay me at the end of the month? Because, you know, the the uh, automatic check from your employer is no longer necessarily forthcoming. Um, we, we've plugged that gap. And because of that, we've been able to almost add another element to the business by opening the doors to students. Whereas before, people didn't come for accreditation until they were certified. Now they come to accreditation and build their business while they're studying. That's the beauty of what the work that you've done, that legacy, is open the doors to students to have that interaction with us, with you, with your program. And so that when they are certified, they're so much further ahead with their business planning and uh, they may even have started their business by then. So I think that's uh, one of the lovely ways it's evolved over the last four or five years. Yes. And it's so nice to know that they're stepping out with confidence, as you say, right at the start, rather than sort of waiting and then thinking, I don't know what to do and I don't know who to talk to. They've kind of get up, getting all the foundations in place early on. Um, funnily enough, just yesterday, I was uh, part of an event, speaking at an event in one of the large training providers, coach training providers, very respected organisation. And I was delivering a session on finance for non-finance coaches as part of the, the yes. a, a wider uh, event on building business. And the Q&A at the end was such a lively Q&A. We had so many questions. There was a long Q&A at the end of it. But what was really nice was so many coaches. We, we checked in at the start and end of the session on what was how did they feel about finance in their business at the start. And there were lots of words like confusion, scared, unsure, nervous, all of that sort of uncertainty, um, avoiding it, <laughs> sort of pretending it'll go away. Um, and at the end of the session, those words had changed into confident, cl clarity, um, knowing their next steps. Um, they've got an action plan as to what to do, what to go and go and put in place. And just to see that shift over the course of an hour or two in their mindset. But, the, but that confidence of knowing what to do, it's that they, 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 they started out a lot of them from the I don't know what I don't know. 
And there were around 100 delegates in that session from all around the world. There were there were um, some UK and European. There were uh, quite a lot of international um, coaches there as well. And across the board, the, the, the comments that we were getting, the questions and the feedback was just saying how valuable it was to have access to that to, to a resource of somebody who understands the coaching world as well as the, the the practicalities side of things so yes you can go and talk to um people who understand commercial side and the business side but they probably don't understand the coaching side or you can talk yeah. to people who are fabulous coaches we've all got networks of coaches do they necessarily understand the commercial aspects of it as well so hopefully what our members are getting is somewhere they can turn where they are getting all the support that they need yeah absolutely i mean i i was talking to a group of uh, a couple of dozen last night in lebanon uh, student coaches and I was saying about the return on investment statement that we produce every January for what you've achieved the previous year. And if they had taken advantage of everything we put in front of them, it would be about £16,000. And I said a, a large sum of that would be the time that Nikki gives. You'd spend thousands to have an hour a month with Nikki and you're getting it complimentary as part of your, your uh, membership. Uh, in fact, we used to call it membership benefits, but Joe Cantala said, I think they're privileges, actually. You know, they're really uh, so I'm starting to change the word from benefits to privileges. Take advantage of all the privileges, all the expertise we've got in our wonderful community. And this is why this interview series has come out, because we've grown exponentially in this last 18 months, two years, haven't we, Nikki? It was you, David and I for many, many years. And then Sue, who's living in Snowdon, and one or two others started to come on board working on the website. And now we have a team of two dozen experts, all in their specialist field, coming together, enjoying your idea of, of, and Ruby's idea of the co-working. We've made that happen. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're a virtual organization. We're all over the world, but we've really come together and embraced co-working and supporting each other for the good of the whole international community. And ultimately, that is for the benefit of the end user, the client. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, and it is a fabulous team. It was, yeah, a huge variety of expertise, backgrounds, knowledge, and everybody has the, brings a fresh perspective to everything we discuss. And it, it, is, it really is a, a, a really nice team of, from a cultural side of things, there's a really nice warmth about the team. That's what the, so I was trying to think, how would I describe it? I think it's, it's that warmth, that sense of everyone together with that yeah. shared um, desire to support and assist our professional communities. Yes, yeah, oh, you're right. So outside of work, you're very passionate about lots of things and clearly very passionate about work and supporting your fellow coaches outside of work. What makes your heart sing, Nikki? Oh, my word. Um, music, I think, is the main thing that makes my heart sing. Um, it, it, I literally, my heart literally sings. Um, I have always loved music. And my grandfather had a, an organ and a grand piano. My grandmother had a piano. Um, my aged aunts, great aunts had pianos. And, so, and I, I remember when I was really little, I used to go and just make up tunes on when we'd go to visit relatives. And as, music has always been in my soul. I think I am wired for music. Um, I have a Christian faith and I'm very strongly involved in my church. I lead one of our music groups. I sing in our choir. Um, we're recording this at the start of Easter weekend. I've got a very busy weekend of lots of music over the next four days. Um, and it, it, it is it is music that lifts my soul when when I'm when I need an energy boost, when I um, am in when I'm alone, my my sort of therapeutic thing to do is just go and sit at my piano for a little while and just see what music comes out of my fingers um it was my my privilege using your, your privilege word a few years ago quite a few years ago probably 20 years ago now i've had the piano um when we when my partner and i bought our current house he pointed out that the lounge was big enough for a grand piano because my bucket list i only ever had two things on it my whole life and i have achieved both of them one was to race up the drag strip at santa pod raceway because my other passion is motorsport um 
and I did that a long time ago and the and so that was one of my bucket lists the other one was to own a grand piano and so I own I have I do have my beautiful piano it is the one thing of all my material possessions if I had to give up everything except one thing the piano that would it'd be a really tough choice but I would even keep the piano over the car which would be a tricky decision but the one thing I would keep would be my grand piano so uh, yes it is my therapy I'll just go and sit and sit and yeah. play for a little while well, if you think about desert island discs, when people are asked, what is your one luxury? The car would be useless. The piano would be an absolute treasure to fill the air with music. And I love mm. the videos on YouTube where somebody is in the forest playing uh, a piano and an elephant is just stood next to it, sort of swaying. It's just so heartening that we can all connect to that. It crosses all sorts of boundaries and languages. So does, I think a piano yeah. would be useful on a desert island. Draw all the Definitely. I'd have to, I'm a very practical person. I would have to take a tuning kit as well because my piano is tuned every six months by my fabulous tuner and it does sound amazing when it's just been tuned. So I would have to have a practical tuning kit as yes. well. Yeah, definitely. I think the two go hand in hand. It's It counts as one luxury, I think <laughs> so. Yes. Ah, well, that's lovely. I didn't really know that about you. Despite all our conversations, I knew your spiritual path. I knew more about the fact that you were passionate because you're in the choir and I joined the choir. So we've talked about that, but not so much about your passion for the piano and your bucket list. So well done on achieving those two things. Thank you. And the yeah. motorsport, I am a I am a complete petrol head, which is becoming an increasingly... <laughs> I grew up with motorsport. My first word when I was a tiny, tiny little small person, um, I would call anyone daddy, but I knew exactly what a car was. My first proper word was car. And I grew up with rallying in the forests of North Wales and around the country. And I've, I competed as a student. I competed for, I've competed in various guises of motorsport as I was growing up. I misspent youth. I could drive a car before I was 17. I had to wait until I was 17 to allow to be allowed to drive on the road and get a driving license. Um, but yeah, I grew up. I, I, and of course, now with the environmental impact, I have this real conflicting dilemma going on within me because my passion is motorsport and I love my car. I love my I love the, the events I'm involved with still. But I also now I'm very consciously aware of the environmental yeah. impact. And yeah. the motorsport industry is doing amazing things, looking at how to reduce the impact on, and the, for example, I'm members at Goodwood Motor, Motor Racing Club, and this year's events are being entirely run on biofuel instead of the traditional fuel. So all the cars have been adapted, and all the historic rally cars and racing cars have been adapted to run on biofuel, which is a phenomenal yeah. step forward. But I'm also very aware that we are having an impact on the planet and that's that's going to be an interesting thing to see how that reconciliation plays out in future years with my coach head on i go what are my goals for what are my big 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 picture life goals and what does my future look like and i think does my future not in not include a car this is this is an interesting dilemma i have with myself occasionally yeah i think it's a fun thing to do with our clients is now and again challenge their reality and just go if we took away the one thing that you think you are always going to have what what yeah. would your life look like yeah wow well i i love these interviews because it's a bit like uh people having secret talent you know you could work in an office with 10 people day in day out and you don't know that one of them plays in the london orchestra or using the oboe or something you think I never, it's because we don't talk to each other enough. And that's the beauty of coaching. It's all about having a good conversation. So every time I talk to you and the rest of the team, I learn something new, fascinating things. And I just can't see the little smiley you being a petrol head covered in grease and uh, dealing with, uh, presumably you do tire changes and you know how to work an engine and all that sort of stuff. Top marks I to you, can. I'm also a natural manager, so I outsourced. So growing up, if my car went when, when the car broke, my dad would get a phone call saying, "I'm coming home for the weekend. I need to change the exhaust or the, need to sort the brakes out." So I'm I'm yeah. I'm very good at delegating the messy stuff, I'm but I'm sure. quite good at knowing what's gone wrong with the car. I'm very good at diagnosing, and going, "It's got this going on with it." Yeah. But um, yeah, the most the, the um. Yes, yeah, so the 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 competition side of things, I I I I've, I've 
yeah, I, I sort of mostly knew my way around a car. But the interesting thing about changing a tire, I do know how to change a wheel. And a few, uh, probably uh, just before COVID, I think it was, I'd gone for a women in a local women's networking lunch with a group of us had, had met for lunch at a local pub. And we were sat there and one of our friends hadn't arrived and she was thinking, where's she got to? And we got a phone call saying she was on her way. And she arrived looking a little bit flustered and she'd got a puncture in one of the country lanes on the way to the pub and just sort of trawled to the pub and parked up and she's saying, I don't know what to do. I've got this puncture. I'm kind of stuck here. I suppose I'm going to have to phone somebody or phone my husband or phone the breakdown people. And um, I said, have you got a spare wheel? She went, yeah. I said, well, let's just, let's just go out and change the wheel. She went, I don't know how. I said, well, I do. So we went out into the car park and I, I talked her through doing it. So she learned how to do it. Again, I'm a good manager. I would delegate it to get her to get her hands busy. Yeah, best way to learn is uh, teach. <laughs> but yeah, so I taught her how to change a wheel and we came back in and, and the all the other women around the table going, you Joss, you changed, you changed a tyre before lunch. <laughs> It's one of those one of those useful skills that I hope I never need, but when I do, it's quite useful yeah. to know what to do. <laughs> well, it's empowering, isn't it? It gives you more confidence knowing uh, you know, that you can go further afield and you have some basic tools. Um, one of my friends has just got the uh, the new Tesla, and I don't know if you've looked in the Tesla. I mean, there's no dashboard. Uh there's just this big <laughs> laptop there's a, there's a screen <laughs> and it's silent. I didn't even hear her coming up the hill behind me, and I just thought. Well, I don't know anything about changing tires or whatever, but the more cars develop, it's going to be harder and harder to teach anybody. It's just a case of, no, you've got to go to the garage and a specific garage. It's like uh, we can't take our, the BMW to any garage because it has to go to a BMW garage for the software to do the diagnostics. So it's just getting harder and harder for all these DIY enthusiasts to do anything. Yeah, that's one one of the reasons I love the historic vehicles, the, the ones from the 1960s, 50s, 60s, 70s, because they are mechanical. You can yes. you know that if you plug something in, it'll do something. You know, if you twist a nut, that it'll have an effect. Whereas now, it, it, the modern vehicles, you open the bonnet and there's just a cover and you yeah. look it in and go, yep, no, nope, can't touch any of those things. <laughs> so no. it is it is. It is very different, um, but our mechanicing skills uh, are just different now. And the the whole yeah. EV route, I have test driven. I test drove a Tesla a couple of years ago, um, and it was an interesting experience. And okay. um, yeah, I suspect at some point I will be forced to own an electrical vehicle because that's the way things are going. But uh, we yeah, will see. Definitely. I should enjoy my enjoy my lovely rally car and my lovely historic cars until then. Yeah, why you can? Why you can? <laughs> Well, we've come to the end of our time. It's It always just flies by so quickly. And talking about Thanks. flying by, you really do need to schedule something in to celebrate your 15th. Because as you say, it's all too easy to get caught up in the moment. And then before you know it, you'll have said, oh, it was last year and you haven't celebrated. It's never too late to celebrate. So I hope you're going to do something. And to build in that little bit of accountability, let me know what you're going to do and when because uh, we would like to share that celebration with you. So you. anybody listening in, uh, don't forget, members in particular, this is a membership privilege. You will be able to have access to Nikki and her wealth of experience. And that's why she's recently um, achieved her accredited fellow mentorship as well as fellow coaching accreditation. So she is at the top of the tree. She's a fellow of the Institute. You can't go any higher uh, or in be, be in better hands. So please, please, please do bring your questions to Nikki on a monthly basis. And um, if you do want to work with uh, a coach uh, and have specific financial experience, then you, know, you can find Nikki and hire her from the IAPCM website and obviously your own website, which is wildempowerment.com lovely easy to lovely remember <laughs> wild empowerment wild, wild empowerment i still remember the day i came up it was 15 years ago and i sat there and the name evolved and that name i just landed on i went yep yeah, that's the right name and wild empowerment is the same thing it's on all the socials um so just search wild empowerment you can hunt me down connect with me on linkedin and uh, and the website is wildempowerment.com mm -hmm does what it says on the tin thank you nikki it's a pleasure as always enjoy the rest of your day thank you and you
Thank you.